Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome to another episode. Point-and-shoot film cameras are a lot of fun. They're small, they're simple, they're stylish, and they're a great way to shoot your first roll of film. But some of them have become really expensive over recent years. The Olympus Mu2, for example, now sells for around £350. It's a nice little camera. It's very pocketable. It's got a 35mm f2.8 lens, but is it £350 worth of camera? Somehow, I rather doubt it. So today, we're going to have a look at some much cheaper alternatives to the Olympus Mu2 and other cameras in the Mu range. We're going to look at the Canon SureShot Mega Zoom 105. We've got the Nikon Light Touch ED Zoom 120, and we've got the Canon SureShot 38 mm f2.8, which, in my opinion, is the pick of today's bunch. But more of that soon. So, without any further ado or malarkey, let's have a look at our first camera for today, and it's this one, the Nikon Light Touch zoom 120 ed this is a lovely little camera it has a very small form factor just like the olympus mu cameras and it's actually very reminiscent of them in its design let's have a closer look so there's the little nikon and this is a very nicely made camera it's a real quality thing it feels very very nice in your hands to switch it on again it's similar to the mu cameras open the little slider out comes the lens and up pops the flash unfortunately the flash is on by default you have to push this little button here to turn it off is that off yes there we are that's off so this symbol now has a little line through it on the screen there very simple top deck. Um, there is a button for the self timer function there, and there we've got the shutter button on the right here. The lens is 38 to 120 millimeters, so it has a very large zoom range and it also has quite a reach. The zoom buttons are on the back here. This is for the wide end, and this one is for the long end. So if we push that button, we'll see the lens extend and there we go so that does turn it into quite a large looking lens let's bring it back of course it works at all points betwixt and between 38 and 120 it's infinitely variable over that range the viewfinder is on the back, of course, and it has a little diopter control that you can adjust to suit your eyesight. So that's a little bit of attention to detail that I think is really nice. There's a little window on the back there that tells you what kind of film you've got loaded. Loading film couldn't be simpler. It's all auto. So there's the switch to undo the back and you can see that in there is the film chamber here it's dx coded this camera so whatever film you put in there as long as it's a dx coded film this camera will automatically set the iso for you if the film doesn't have a dx rating the camera defaults to 100 iso and you drag your film across here close the back the camera makes all its whirring electronic noises and if there was a film loaded in it would now be loaded and wound on. So it's a very very simple camera to use, there's very little to think about, it's small, it's pocketable and it's been a really nice experience shooting it. The lens is a little slow. It's f5.3 at the wide end to f, I think it's 
yeah, F9 at the long end. So it is a little slow, but that makes for sharp images. Smaller apertures makes for sharp images. And this camera does give sharp images and very contrasty images too. And it does seem to particularly like the black and white film that I loaded. The lens on this camera is quite nice, actually. It features Nikon's extra low dispersion glass. That's where the ED in the uh, name comes from. And that really is quite nice glass because it's the kind of glass they were using in their SLR lenses at the time. And it really does work well on this camera. I made some very nice high contrast, very sharp images with it. I also had quite a few happy accidents with this camera. This is not a camera that I would buy to guarantee perfect images every time. For that you need a rangefinder or an SLR or a camera that you have a little more control over. This one's a bit more unpredictable but it does mean you come up with those happy accident images which I very much like. They can be really nice images. It's a cheap camera too and I recently bought this camera for £15 and it seems to me that for a very small, very pocketable, fun little camera that will work time after time and give you results time after time, I think that's got to be a bargain. A really nice little piece of kit. Okay, the next camera we're going to look at is this lovely little plastic fantastic thing this is the canon sure shot 38 millimeter f 2.8 this is a really nice camera it's from the early to mid 80s and it's got that 80s angular blocky sort of look let's have a closer look and here is our little Canon and to switch it on we push this control upwards whereupon with a certain amount of mechanical clonking and clanking it reveals its 38mm f2.8 lens and this is a really nice lens. I love the 38mm focal length because it's near enough to 40mm which is my favourite focal length. Here is the switch to open the camera back and inside we find the same sort of auto winding mechanism that the Nikon had. No DX coding for this camera, you have to set the ASA setting on the front which is here. I don't know if you can see that, that's where you can see the setting and to change that you just turn a little wheel underneath the lens here. A very, very nice little camera. Very, very simple. Very, very easy to use with an absolutely fantastic little lens. It makes very sharp images with very high contrast and really I was surprised at how nicely this camera shoots. For a very simple camera, you get some really nice results out of it. There are not many controls on it. It's still really simple. I'll show you the rest of them. So on the top here, thank you. On the top here, we have our film remainder uh, indicator. This control initiates the auto rewind. This control opens the back very little on the back itself and nothing around this side so it's a very very simple camera to use there is really nothing to get in the way of the photographic experience there's no process there's nothing to think about there's no settings to enter it really does do what it says on the tin which is point and shoot it does take a little longer to focus than the Nikon though. It has a, a strange sort of very early auto focus design which actually works very very well. I only miss focusing one shot using this camera 
but it does take a second or two to find that focus. You can see it moving in the viewfinder. There are little uh, marks in the viewfinder and the focus will move to the position it's selected before the shutter fires. Quite unusual, a little bit slow, but it hardly ever fails. It's very, very accurate. Again, it has a very tiny viewfinder, although it's slightly bigger than the Nikon, and it does have a tendency to overexpose, so I did have to pull down the exposure in pretty much all of the shots that I took with it. However, that's okay, because film has a very high latitude, at least print film does, and when you do pull down that exposure, you'll find, if your camera's overexposing, more likely than not, you'll find the detail is still there in those overexposed areas. Film doesn't blow out anything like as easily as digital cameras do. Is it pocketable? Yeah, if you've got a big pocket. It takes two AA batteries, which is actually fantastic because you can buy them anywhere. The Nikon takes the CR123 battery, which is available, but it's not available on the high street. Now, one great feature on this camera that I really appreciate is that while it's auto-rewind, the auto-rewind does not take all of the film back into the can. It leaves a little bit poking out, which is ideal for me because I use a daylight developing tank and I need that little bit of leader uh, left out of the can so I can load up the film into the uh, developing reel. So this is really good from my point of view for that. A great little camera, noisy in operation, very mechanical sounding, but it's reliable it worked time after time and it doesn't miss focus very often. As far as cost goes, I bought this camera for £25 because the flash isn't working. You can get a fully working version of this camera if you want flash for between £50 to £60 or thereabouts. And that, in my view, is a real bargain and a great value point and shoot probably one of the best value points and shoots there is right now so our third camera for today is this one this is the canon sure shot mega zoom 105 and this camera i think dates from the late 80s possibly the early 90s i'm not entirely sure it's a sort of an evolution from this sure shot over here and you'll see that it's a much bigger camera and much weightier it also feels more nicely made it feels like a more quality machine i don't think it is better quality but it certainly feels that way let's have a closer look so there's our little sure shot 105 this camera has a zoom lens from 35 to 105 millimeters and all points betwixt and between it's a very nice lens it's an f3.5 lens i can't show you it uh, actually moving and zooming because the battery for this camera recently died on me however i have got several shots i've shot with it over the years i've owned this camera for around about 10 years or so there's the back view the controls are on the back here and they are to turn the flash off. Uh, this one has a picture of an eye, I assume that's some kind of red eye control. Um, this camera can do timer shooting and it looks like it can also do multiple shots as well. Um, and the on off button for the camera is down the bottom here. The buttons are all nice quality rubber there's a little screen on the back which shows you how much film is left not too much on the top deck so there's the wide and there's the zoom buttons so just press those to zoom the lens shutter button of course is there and the control to open the back is here so let's just have a look again it's an auto load another dx uh, coded camera which again defaults to 100 ISO if your film is not DX coded. 
very, very simple to load, very, very simple uh, to use. The viewfinder is tiny, as it is on all these cameras. None of these cameras have a bigger viewfinder than the old Leica 2 here, which itself has a very tiny viewfinder, and these cameras certainly continue that tradition. They're very small, but they are usable. This one has no parallax frame lines, unfortunately, unlike the Nikon and the SureShot 38mm, which do have frame lines and show you where the edge of your shot is in the viewfinder, so that's a nice handy feature. The focus is pretty reliable. It doesn't tend to miss as many shots uh, as the Nikon does. I reckon the, the success rate for the Nikon is something like 75 to 80 percent properly focused shots. Uh, I'd say this one is probably more like 90 percent or thereabouts. It does miss focus sometimes but then it's a point and shoot so we should expect that. The lens is sharp, it's not quite as sharp as the Nikon lens or indeed the Canon SureShot 38mm lens, but it is nice and sharp, tolerably sharp, and don't forget most of the time in bright light your aperture is going to close down quite a way past its maximum opening of f3.5 at the wide end, so that also encourages sharpness. Like all these cameras, this one has an element of unpredictability, which is a lot of why I like them, actually. And again, you get that sort of hipstamatic flavour where you don't know all the time exactly what kind of shot you're going to get. But that just makes them more fun, in my view. I find these cameras quite liberating to use because, as I say, there's no process involved. You don't have to think about anything. You're not concentrating on your f-stop or your shutter speed or critical focus. The camera does all that for you. So you can concentrate on composition, colour, line, form and make images that are sometimes a little unpredictable but most of the time are very nice indeed and I think these cameras are really worth looking at. In terms of cost this one will go for around about 50 to 60 pounds so it's sort of on a par with the other Canon Sure Shot that we looked at. Again for a reliable, practical, useful camera I think that is a real bargain. So there we are, three lovely little point and shoot film cameras. They're all a lot of fun, they're all very simple to use and importantly they are all relatively cheap. Go out and get one today, I don't think you'll regret it. So that's it from me for now. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell before you go. And if you like the content on this channel and you'd like to help it grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography for as little as one dollar per month. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time for some more xenography.